All right, so this one's gonna be a fun one. Part two of fixing Tector. This one we're gonna be focusing on buffing and adding skills. So for those who didn't catch the last part, uh, we were looking at how do we fix Tector with the skills it currently has. Now, some of the things that we discussed and introduced are gonna be pulled over into this, but this one now we're gonna get into how do we now buff Tector? First thing we're gonna do is actually buff and improve Photonic Fury. This one isn't an addition, but essentially back in the OG days of NGS, Photonic Fury did 40 potency. Uh, some time had passed and then that potency was increased to 60. I think it's time now, given that Photonic Fury is our core, it needs another potency increase. Going as little as 80, so another 20, but as high as 100. But for now, we're gonna leave it at 80 because I feel like giving it 40 potency without Tector players having to work for something is probably problematic. We'll give it at 60 to 80, and then we'll see where else we can get that additional 80 to 100. The other thing that we need to fix about Photonic Fury is hit scan on weak points. One of the issues with Photonic Fury outside of one guard reflect is that it's not always going to prioritize a weak spot. You could be targeting and hitting the weak spot, but you're a couple of feet too high, a couple of feet to the left, and it is going to not hit the weak spot since you're gonna see white damage. Giving Photonic Fury, regardless if it's one guard or if it's coming from a photon art, hit scan. If you are targeting the weak spot, Photonic Fury will always hit that weak spot. The next thing that we want to improve, and that is skip beat. Specifically skip beat for both photon arts and techniques. There's no reason why your wand skip arts through photon arts shouldn't do the same thing. Right now it feels like wand skip arts and skip beats are a little over engineered for no reason. This next one is gonna be a big one and this is wand lovers reinforce. What is the issue with Wand Lovers right now compared to its, I guess, sibling skills, which is gonna be Launcher Reinforce? It doesn't do additional potency. It gets a little bit of potency and it gets an attack speed boost, but it's very, very weak. And so there's two ways I would improve this. The first way is adding additional attacks to Photon Arts techniques, Wand Counter, and Normals. And this could be an additional Photonic Fury, similar to what we have in the seal, when we have the additional attack modifier. Though that might be a little too much, the other thing that I would suggest is just increasing its potency. I believe when we look at launcher reinforce, the normal attack potency increases like 100 potency. Now that might change based on the normal, based on the attack, but essentially some attacks get at least 100 potency. And it might be time to at least give the normal attacks during Wand Lovers additional potency. Because right now, Wand Lovers doesn't really make any sense from a damage or DPS standpoint. It doesn't really synergize with anything, and so the purpose of giving normal attacks increased attack speed doesn't really do much. We can either add additional attacks to Photon Arts and even techniques, or just increasing the potency of its normal attacks. The third thing that I would do, activate Skip Beat. While Wand Lovers, is active, your third normal attack now becomes skip beat. When wand lovers is active, you can do normal one, normal two, skip beat into your wand attack EX. So you don't actually have to use any photon art to techniques while still having the ability to engage skip beat with two photon arts or skip beat with a charged technique. Now we're getting into a new skill for wand lovers which is Wand Lovers Extension. So when you activate Wand Lovers, you have it for 30 seconds. And after 30 seconds, it goes on cooldown. What Wand Lovers Extension would do is after every successful wand counter, you increase the duration of Wand Lovers up to 15 seconds. So for every counter, you get an additional five seconds. So if you get successfully counter three times or successfully use the wand weapon action three times, Wand Lover extends its duration from 30 seconds to 45 seconds. Let's move on to Wand Element Pursuit. For those who followed me in part one of Fixing Tector, we know that that was the main concentration. And the reason for that is because Wand Element Pursuit is our core mechanic. This is where all of Wand's techniques essentially build into. And one of the big weaknesses that we as Tector have is that we aren't rewarded for building this core mechanic or even using this core mechanic. So how do we improve that? The first I call Enhanced Pursuit. 
And essentially what this does is that while the element pursuit meter is filled, you gain additional effects. Now, what are those additional effects? It enhances the effects of shift to the bond. So what does that mean? When you have full meter, you get 5% potency. You get additional 5% damage reduction. You get an additional 5% PP recovery. You get an additional 5% status resist. Of course, I'm someone who always wants to be balanced and fair. So one of the things you could do to control that is when one element pursuit meter is filled and you get these additional effects, it slowly decreases one element pursuit. So you have to continually be using your wand counters, your swift smash to build one element pursuit to keep the bonuses. And let's say that after the one element pursuit meter drops, let's say 90%, you lose the bonuses. So the idea is, is that if you're gonna hold pursuit, that you have to actively keep it going or over time it is going to decrease. Now, why am I suggesting this skill? For a couple of reasons. One is that still Tector needs a reward structure. Like if we look at Slayer and we look at its gear gauge, you get additional power by keeping that gear gauge full. So that's a reward structure for building the gear gauge, which is core to Gunblade's whole kit. And then of course, if you use that through overdrive, there's a big payoff. Right now, One Element Pursuit doesn't have any reward structure for building it, and its payoff is not as strong. It is fairly weak. The other advantage here is that there's a lot of times when we'll use the Dark Fall series type of enemies where Tector just can't hit the enemy. So we'll think of Dark Falls Interception, we'll think of Dark Falls Aegis, and Dark Falls Solus. What this allows you to do is have additional power during those times to where when you can hit them, you're making up for lost time. Because right now that's one of Tector's big weaknesses is that the minute you can't hit the enemy, things kind of go downhill fast. It's not perfect. So that's where we get into the next skill that I would propose to fix Tector. One element pursuit, pursuit chase. Once you have one element pursuit built and you use it, you gain additional effects for 20 seconds. As you can see, I'm kind of stealing things from the hell of bullets or the jet sweep jolts. What are those additional effects? These effects after using one element pursuit, pursuit chase are improved one element pursuit generation. And I say 20%. And when I use these numbers, these are just numbers I'm throwing out. They might not make sense from a balanced perspective. So 20%, what does that mean? That means that for 20 seconds, instead of having to build 10,000 points of one element pursuit, which is what builds your one element pursuit meter, 20% now you have to build 8,000. So instead of having to do five and a half swift smashes or five and a half wand counters, if my math is relatively correct, now you would do four and a half. So essentially you're reducing the amount of attacks you have to do to build one element pursuit. The other thing you get for 20 seconds is increased photonic fury damage. And so this is where that other 20 comes in. So instead of doing now, if we were to have buffed Photonic Fury to 80 potency, when you use Pursuit Chase for those 20 seconds, it is now 100 potency. And then of course, if you take into account the element weakness, it gets additional bonuses. The other bonus for 20 seconds is increased compound generation 10%. For 20 seconds, your ability to build compounds through your attacks, through your wand attacks specifically, the next is reduces wand lover's cooldown by 10 seconds. So every time that you use a wand element pursuit, your wand lover's cooldown reduces 10 seconds. And of course, we start seeing some synergies that I'm starting to build in with the improvements that I propose for wand lovers. Additionally, the effects from enhanced pursuit, so once again, basically those shift effects like the 5% potency, 5% damage reduction, also carry over for 20 seconds. This is trying to build in that reward structure. You've built up one element pursuit. You've got additional shift of bonuses. You'll lose them if you're not continually to maintain one element meter. But once you use it, then you get additional benefits that help you build things like one element pursuit again. You keep those bonuses going and you can use this now, let's say against Dark Falls where it's been a couple seconds you haven't been able to hit them. Now you can kind of use this burst, keep those benefits during that burst window where you can't hit Dark Falls, building up your next rotation, building up more quickly 
that next one element pursuit so that even though you maybe you have to wait another 10 seconds again now that is closer to being filled you can then use that rotation again additionally when using pursuit chase not only do you get those shift effects but it also refreshes shift the bond now you might be asking yourself but when we looked at enhanced pursuit you said that the minute your wand element pursuit meter is filled it begins to deplete kind of like a gun blade gear and once it hits a certain threshold let's say 90 percent you lose those benefits so let's say you're 100 percent wand element pursuit and now you got that additional shift to enhancement but then for whatever reason let's say dark falls you can't hit them it drops to 90. so now you've lost those benefits but of course the minute you lose those benefits you stop losing meter well this is where the next skill comes in one element pursuit concentration what this does is that it increases one element pursuit gauge by 10 to 20 percent what do i mean the gauge i mean the amount of meter its meter is 10,000 units so if you increase it by 10 to 20 percent that 10,000 now increases to 12,000 essentially what that means is that you can build two additional bars if we were to look at this from a like a gun blade gauge or a traditional gauge even though you might not be using one element pursuit now you have that additional meter so where if you your shift to effects start taking away from meter you're still at 100 percent for some time so it allows you to keep the bonuses but here's the catch this additional 10 20 percent builds slower so let's say that for every wand counter for every swift smash you build one bar it builds 50 percent slower so now you have to do two counters to build one you have to do four counters to build two so even though you've got some safe space to kind of manage one element pursuit it's not going to come as easy and so it becomes one of the things do you want to build it or do you want to use one element pursuit but in the case of dark falls hey i don't have to worry about losing my benefits and timing out because i've done some work to build more the other benefit to this is that a lot of times with one element pursuit you're not going to find the appropriate window to use it and so for many of you you probably realize you're sitting on a bar and now you're doing more wand counters because you're not in the right space to use one element pursuit you're waiting that's a lot of wasted resource so what this allows you to do is actually say hey you're not necessarily being punished for not using one element pursuit right away so what happens if you were to build an additional 10 to 20 percent and you still have it and you use one element pursuit congratulations that additional meter that you built carries over into the next one that additional 2000 meter goes into the next revoke does it give me 2000 back maybe it only gives me 50 percent. maybe it gives me you know 1000 but you can see that synergizes with pursuit chase because pursuit chase is already lowering the amount of one element of pursuit you need so they're playing off of each other you're still being rewarded you're not being heavily penalized and able to make decisions based on the situation and the final skill if this should even be a skill one element pursuit photonic pursuit and this is very very simple after using one element pursuit it automatically applies the element blot based on whatever that one element was and so those are my changes to one element pursuit now we get into the compound techniques now this one is going to be interesting because when i was thinking about this i had to design something that made sense for both force and tector so what is the reward structure for using these compound techniques or what is a way that we can allow the player to use these compound techniques more freely even if it does come with disadvantages such as losing element accumulation that is the skill compound after effect and this is the skill for both force and tector after using a compound technique you gain additional benefits at the completion of that compound technique for 30 seconds so for example if you were going to use Fomelgian for 30 seconds you would get a 5% potency increase and a 5% crit rate increase for Branson you would get 10% reduced PP consumption 10% increased PP recovery 10% resource generation and potentially 10% cooldown reduction and then Xandion you get 5% increased move speed 10% attack speed, 15% charge speed. I use the charge speed because 
things might need to be different between attacks that have charge states and attacks that don't, but you might be able to remove the charge speed and just say 5% move speed, 10% attack speed. Similar to what we have in the seal, except not as powerful. And so of course, if you use two compounds, you would get both of those effects for 30 seconds. And as you can see for Tector, there's a lot of synergies because these different effects play into the wand element pursuit skills, but they also play into wand lovers. The big issue with wand lovers right now is that it is normal attack based. But right now the normal attacks other than their attack speed really don't do anything. So they need a potency increase. But imagine using Xandion and then also now having wand lovers. Your normal attacks with their increased potency are now even faster. Now there's a reason for using wand lovers over the other abilities such as your Photon Archer Swift Smash. Because if you were to pair it with Pursuit Chase, where you're getting improved wand element pursuit generation, increased photonic fury damage, increased compound regeneration, wand lovers for those 30 or 45 seconds if you use wand lovers extension, synergizes well and allows you to actually use that ability for damage while also still building those resources. Because once again, you're trying to maintain that reward structure. You've got 30 to 20 seconds to use these bonuses and benefits to build into the next sequence to where you repeat that cycle. The next idea, now this is an interesting one, which you know you can take it or leave it, but there's another skill for overemphasis, and I'll call this skill synchronicity. Now, what does synchronicity do? When you use overemphasis, not only do you get your full HP and PP back in addition to plus 50 PP for 30 seconds, with synchronicity, it now provides a full one element pursuit meter. So let's say you were at zero meter, you use overemphasis, now you're at 10,000 units. Or if you've got that one element pursuit concentration, you're at 12,000. So you get a free bar and of course all the benefits that come with it. Additionally, because this is a Tector skill that's not wand related, you get a full tricky capacitor. Additionally, you get 50% meter for your compound technique. And it also either removes or greatly reduces the cooldown for wand lovers. So once again, remember overemphasis is a very weird ability because it has a very, very long cooldown. It's got about 300 seconds. And if you're playing things very well, there's situations where you might not ever use it. It's very situational. This gives some more options. You can imagine at the beginning of a quest after 30 seconds, you're like, you know what? I wanna give myself a full wall element pursuit. I wanna give myself additional compound meter. The other thing that I would do is actually reward players for building overemphasis stock. So at the start of the quest, you get one stock after 30 seconds, and then after another 300 seconds, you get another stock. And chances are in a lot of quests, if you even get two stocks, you know, you can only use it once or twice. So let's say that you have two stocks of overemphasis. If you were to use overemphasis while having two stocks, you get all of these abilities, but you also get, instead of 50% compound technique gauge, now you get one full stock. So it's like, congratulations, you get a free stock of compound uh, gauge after every 330 seconds. Because once again, overemphasis requires 30 seconds to just activate at the beginning of a quest and then another 300 seconds to get the second stock. And then finally to round this out, let's talk about Tricky Capacitor because overemphasis synchronicity plays into that. For those who don't realize, when it comes to units, it requires 400 arbitrary units of Tricky Capacitor to build a full Tricky Capacitor meter. Do you know what also has 400 arbitrary units to build itself? You guessed it, Ranger and Gunner's Rifle Spread Shot. What is the difference between Spread Shot and Tricky Capacitor? One has Spread Shot Auto Charge. And for those who might not be familiar, Ranger will automatically build Spread Shot over 45 seconds. So of course it, it never plays out that way because Ranger's always using Rifle. But essentially, if they wanted to use launcher or something else or just not attack and wait around, spread shot is automatically building. And so essentially it is time for Tricky Capacitor to get this as well. I don't understand why Tricky Capacitor doesn't have this. And I don't actually understand why Gunner, where Rifle is one of their main abilities, doesn't have this as well. And so those are my skill ideas in fixing, in this case, buffing Tector. And of course, once again, let me know your thoughts of course, we're not gonna get half of this stuff. We probably won't get any of this stuff. But if Sega is listening and they wanna take some good ideas to understand how they need to start rounding out some of these weaker classes like Tector and Force, maybe they're listening and can take some notes as they start trying to, if they even care, to improve these classes, hopefully by the end of the year. But other than that, I will catch you all next time.